Hi, this is Al from Cinema Machine, and I'm here with Ryan. How are you doing this week? Doing good. And Brandon, how are you? Doing great, Al. Thank you. Fantastic. Well, this week we're coming to you uh, with an extra episode. We are going to be reviewing The Devil All the Time, now streaming on Netflix. But first and foremost, we want to make sure you know how to get in touch with us. So, Ryan, do you mind telling everybody the best way to find us? Yeah. Um, easiest thing is to use the comments section if you're watching on YouTube. And then um, if you're on Instagram, follow us at Cinema Machine Pod, and we get some good uh, movie conversations going there. So feel free to join in. Awesome. Thanks. So uh, The Devil All the Time, uh, I'll give a quick synopsis of the movie. It is sinister characters converge around a young man devoted to protecting those he loves in a post-war backwoods town teeming with corruption and brutality. Uh, this movie was directed by Antonio Campos, and it has quite the star-studded cast. Uh, Robert Pattinson, Tom Holland, Bill Skarsgård, uh, Riley Keough, uh, just to name a few. And we'll get into the cast, of course, but... <coughs> I want to make sure that uh, I ask, this is a streaming movie, as we mentioned, it's on Netflix. So um, first I want to get your initial thoughts on the movie and uh, maybe how uh, you heard about this movie. Did it pop up in your Netflix feed or did you hear about it beforehand? So Brandon, I'm going to start with you. Um, I think I first heard of it a few weeks ago, like when they... Released that first trailer. I guess it was, I mean, as far as I know, it was the initial, like, you know, reveal of the movie. Um, mm-hmm. <clears throat> sorry, I can't talk right now. I coughed a lot, <laughs> coughed a lot earlier, kind of took my voice away. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, make sure you go to our social media. You'll see some clips from why he's coughing. Mm. It's been a um, night. <laughs> yeah. But no, that first trailer, uh, and I was pretty interested in it. It's a good, good cast. Uh, I like the setting of it. It reminded me a lot of um, Lawless uh, from a few yep. years back. Um, Agreed. But um, yeah, I watched it on Netflix like I guess everybody did. Yeah, I don't think there's any other option, is there? There's mm. nobody. There's not playing at any theaters. So mm. <laughs> no. not, nothing's playing in any theaters really. So um, all right. So Ryan, what'd you think? Um, I, so first time I had heard of the movie, was actually when, uh, Brandon shot the, um, trailer out to us. If I recall, it was in a news segment. We mentioned that this trailer had come out because we were all like, Hey, it's because it came out like what? Three weeks before it was set to release on Netflix. Yeah. Yeah, It was not. Yeah. We talked about it next month. We, 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 um, talked about how a star-studded cast is sometimes just good on paper i remember talking about that right so um yeah um i so i I, it's funny you brought up the lawless comparison because that was immediately what like right when the movie started that's what i thought of um Mm -hmm. just you know the feel of it um some of the performances were a little over the top for me um but as far as Netflix movies go, I was pretty happy with this one. Um, <coughs> but it look. was not. It did this. This what's that? Uh, you said as far as Netflix movies go. So, mm-hmm. kind of, do you mean <coughs> that Netflix movies have a certain look, feel, or anything like that, or what? Did you no. Mean by that? So, uh, just performance, like, or how I, <coughs> how, you know, if, if I like them, or not, I tend to. I haven't had a lot of Netflix Netflix films. That I've, do you judge them like a VO, like a straight to video release yeah. almost? Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you, Brandon? And I, I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't, but I guess I'm just still there with <laughs> Netflix. It's, it's like, your prerog- it's your prerogative, right? You can do it. <laughs> well, I mean, so, like, there's some like I, I probably wouldn't put some movies on certain streaming platforms through the same look at them through the same lens. Like I tend to have a little bit more um, or give a little bit more credibility to like HBO films or that type of thing. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, it's, it's so I'm still I just I guess Netflix like they've got good shows that are, like I love Ozark, but I've not movie wise have not ever really been blown away by anything that they've put out. Yeah, I think so. I, I just as far as low I, standard as far as I I go on that <clears throat> on that conversation, I think that Amazon puts out the better movies, and I would agree n- with that. Uh, I, the kind of movies I like, I like mm-hmm. a lot of their I like. A, quite a few i won't say a lot but quite a few of their movies uh, sure. in the past um and uh but i mean uh, netflix has been climbing the ranks as far as awards and things like that but sure to brandon's <clears throat> point as seeing this as like a direct to video or whatever i still don't think that the academy and folks like that really want to give them not just them, but any streaming service, uh, they're due just yet. Like they want people to go to the theaters and things like that. So, um, but do you think we're getting close to where people will see that? Cause I know Amazon on quite a few of their movies, they've released them in the theater for a short run. <clears throat> yeah. I think, uh, I think the Irishman was yeah. a huge step in that direction too. Yeah. Uh, that was, uh, I well, mean, that was big name. Didn't didn't Roma win, or was uh, it just nominated? I, don't know. I think for some reason I thought it won. I'll look it up. Could be wrong. Fact check. Yeah, look it up. <laughs> but I know it was nominated. But I thought it I thought it won the year that it came out. Uh, I mean, even if it did, it's not to not to say that they can't win. It's just I think I don't think that streaming movies are viewed through the same. Yeah, or, uh, you know, I think in the same way yet. I, I think it has something to do with uh, similar to what Brandon said, but I think people also think they only stream like fast food. Like, ah, uh, I can get this done right. real quick and just have it on the background sure. while I'm ironing a shirt or or whatever the case may yeah. be. Um, it it won best director, Roma. That is uh, mm-hmm. best actress. I'm sorry, it was a nominee for those. Best Director at one, Cinematography at one, and International Feature Film at one. So, gotcha. But it's also on Criterion, so <laughs> let's just... Um, let's pump the brakes. Yeah. Yeah, okay. so um, the cast, uh, did, did that attract you initially or was it the story or or, or, because i mean like you said we just saw the trailer a few weeks ago so um it was for me it was cast and tone of the trailer okay yeah um just the i don't know i like that it had kind of like a gritty thriller feel to me and i tend to i don't know why but i tend to like movies that are like in the outdoors or mainly in the outdoors like i love like um the gray and any anything that's like out in like wooded areas i don't know why it's just so i think that kind of appealed to me there's a lot of that um but yeah i think the main thing that stood out was probably the cast okay all right brandon how about you yeah i mean there's really the same selling points for me cast tone setting um again i i think i mentioned this but it just had that lawless feel like i I really liked lawless when it came out and i hadn't seen a movie uh kind of in that period uh, in a while and so that was a good a good uh i guess uh palate cleansing type thing that i was expecting Mm -hmm. um but uh, i guess i haven't said what i thought about the movie i did not like this movie i didn't Um, like it either I'm glad you didn't like it because I felt held hostage during this movie. I wanted to turn it off, and I I didn't like it from very early on. It felt like a jumbled mess. Yeah. But I've liked other movies and projects from Antonio Campos. Like, I what else has he done? Christine. He did that movie, Christine, that oh, I love yeah. so much. Okay. Yeah, and that movie... Seriously, anybody that wants to watch a very good slow burn of a movie, go watch Christine. It is so good. Uh, it's a bummer of a movie, but it is very good. Um, he also uh, yeah. did something with The Punisher. Um, 
I, I was reading. So, uh, was he a director on The Punisher? At this show? Yeah. Gotcha. Um, but I, I, I absolutely hated this movie. I never want to see this movie again. <laughs> never want. And like, I just, I hate this movie. I hate everything about this movie. I hate it. It's not a. It was good, but it was kind of okay. No, it's. I was not. I hate this. Movie. Yeah, it was definitely not. Um, didn't live up to the hype for me. Well, here's um, the, it, it, that's why they only advertised it three weeks ago. <laughs> it's like they didn't want. To, they didn't want people to. Yeah. Yeah. They bottleneck this thing and and it goes right in line with what we were kind of saying is that those star-studded cast those too good to be true type of cast seem to be too good to be true you know what i mean like it just felt like most everyone in this movie was overreaching so far (laughs) as far as like especially there was a scene with robert pattinson in the church where I was just like, whoa, buddy. <laughs> just like... It, it, I'm a nation! <laughs> well, uh, it, it, was just, it was just like, what preacher have you ever seen that wore the tuxedo out of Dumb and Dumber? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what preacher ever was like, yeah, I'm not a charlatan, you know? My favorite character in the movie was the guy who played... <laughs> Dudley and Harry <laughs> Potter. Like he was that my was, favorite character. That was that was my favorite part about the movie was realizing that's who he was. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was like the whole time I was like, I know this guy from something. And yeah. I couldn't place it. And then I never figured it out during the movie. After the movie was over, I looked it up and I was like, Oh yeah. Dudley. He's yeah. skinny now. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. Um, His teeth are still not great, but Yeah, know. I like I like Riley Kyo. I like um I like her in other things. Um I liked her in p- particular scenes in this movie. Uh not that I liked the movie around her, but I liked some of her action. I think she's a actress to keep an eye on is my is my mm-hmm. point. Who are you talking about? Uh, Riley Kyo. Um the the um Bonnie and Clyde girl that was going around with um, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mailey. Jason Clark. Yeah, she. Um, Did you pick that up, Brandon? What, Melly from Logan Lucky? Oh yeah, yeah, I did recognize that. That was same as- so she's really good in Under the Silver Lake. But I've never taken notes during a movie before. But I figured, hey, I've got nothing better to do during this movie, so I did. And these are the notes I took. This movie is so bad. wants to be a Coen Brothers movie. And it's not. <laughs> that was my first note. It wanted so badly. So if you're in for a good movie, I've got a list of movies that I thought of during this movie that you should go watch instead. Miller's Crossing, Blood Simple, Barton Fink, and Hudsucker Proxy. Very good movies. That <laughs> captured the era in which they were trying to capture a lot better than this. We'll use the word stinker. Did no this word th- this needs a stronger word. This movie is just awful. <laughs> I thought Tom Holland did okay in parts. Um, I think that he has <coughs> a, a outside of Spider Man. Brutal for me. I know Ryan's gonna make fun of me, but all the British people that were doing Southern accents really failed at Southern accents. <laughs> they in this did. Movie. Tom, no, I will agree with you on that. Just as, that's just always as, a sticking point for <coughs> me is like people doing Southern accents like. And I'm not from yeah. West Virginia, but like I do know Southern accents. I'm from the but South. It not everybody like, talk like they, you know. It's like well, the, it's not even that. Like it's not even a like. It's like an inconsistency thing. Like, I feel like every I just, time I they, could still like, feel like the British accent coming through with certain things. Yeah, and I was like, yeah, yeah. I don't know. <clears throat> yeah, I thought. I mean, Pattinson was. <laughs> He was, he was, he was, he was just, cringeworthy Katie, like the whole movie. Katie's like already lukewarm on him as Batman, and <laughs> so I'm like Robert Pattinson's in this one. Maybe this will help you. I think he's. We watched this movie, and she's like, "That didn't help." I me. feel like he's like maybe 
gotten a little too big for his britches with his a little bit of the like notoriety that he kind of received in a few movies and the indie like, route. I'm gonna pull a I'm gonna pull like a method actor type thing. I don't know if he did, but it just felt like he was just trying too hard. I, I and did. there were a couple moments where it, it it did it for me, but most of the time he was just I, I, way over the top. I did read that Robert Pattinson refused to let anybody hear his accent until his first scene. So, yeah, when you make <laughs> so uh, some sort of, it's like when you're doing things like that, it's like, all right, man. Yeah, yeah. I I I mean, I'm going to go ahead and I mean, we're just going to spoil this movie. I I, I honestly uh, yeah, you I mean, we'll put it up at the end and everything, but Seriously, everybody's canceling their Netflix subscription because of cuties. I might cancel mine because of the devil all the time because it's just that bad. It's like, are you even trying? Because <laughs> it's just that bad. It was just, there were plot points in this movie that were just terrible that made I it. Just, movie well, it's based on a book. This movie. Yeah, it's it based is. on the and book. It, it and the guy like, narrating was the author of the book. Holy crap. Like, that's another thing is like, it felt like, I wonder if this was a Netflix mandate. Like, they put this movie together, and then Netflix was like, "All right, this is going on Netflix, so we gotta dumb it down a little bit." No offense to people that watch Netflix movies, but you know, okay, they're gonna be they, eating tater chips. <laughs> they're like, they're <laughs> like, all right, we gotta like basically hold their hand to this whole movie. Let's get somebody to narrate it and like yeah. explain all the things that you're already, yeah. you know, you know all this stuff that's going on. And then they also like, I don't know if like, um, like, and then they had like little like. Um, title cards for every time the time would change. It's like, would, yeah. you would have been able to figure that out regardless if you're seeing a character that's already died in the first 10 minutes of the movie and now they're here. It's like, okay, this is a flashback. Right. But like, even that, like the narrative structure was all over the place. It felt like, like every 10 minutes there was this like huge, like emotional, like crazy dark thing <clears throat> that was happening that had no build up to it. And I it didn't, just... I, th- yeah, I... Like halfway through this movie, I didn't know where they were going with it. it was uh, just, one, like, I, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, I just I felt like there wasn't any like, like they couldn't like hammer down what the main plot was going to be in this movie until like, I don't know, twenty minutes till the end. <laughs> yeah, it. I don't know. It's, uh, it just never felt like it was going anywhere, like material for me. Well, it just like, it jumps around plots, so much. But, you don't get to spend a lot of time with really any character at least not any why you you spend a lot of time at first with the younger version of uh the boy donald what is his name not donald uh arvin Arvin. Um, what a common household name so you spend like the the little version of arvin but then you're also jumping over to like mio uh wachowski's character and dudley's character and then uh jason clark and uh whatever her name is Mm -hmm. um I just use their actor actress names because I yeah, can't don't, remember their names. But. Don't don't try to respect this movie. <clears throat> it's terrible. <laughs> this movie. I just felt like, and then like Sebastian Stan stuff. It's like the it it jumped so like just all over the. And it, it honestly felt like maybe this could have been a little more serviceable if it was a series and they could actually flesh out this stuff over a longer period mm-hmm. of time instead of just getting little small tidbits here and there and not really having any substance to it. <clears throat> Honestly, my favorite my favorite section of the movie was Skarsgård stuff at the beginning. <laughs> like that was that was the where I was like most bought in on anything. He, and his that, accent was, was terrible too. He pulled me after out after that. Yeah. I was just well. I don't know. So uh, another thing is, and I, and I've talked to Brandon about this in the past, but whenever they did <clears throat> release the Irishman, I didn't like. Did you like the Irishman? No. Um, okay. But I didn't want to see it. Uh, I wanted to see it because of what was happening in the movie. It was, you know, it was basically the Goodfellas cast with, you know, and I love Joe Pesci and and Martin Scorsese and so on and so forth. But one thing I said to Brandon was like, man, this movie just looks, it doesn't look dirty. It doesn't look dingy. It doesn't look lived in and things of that nature. And this movie had this. four, three. No. Um, And this movie had the same problem. This movie everything looked like it was a set everything looked like it was you know it, it kind of felt like like Brandon was saying the time stamps and things like the 
you know, the notifications of like, hey, here's the time and blah, 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 this, that, and the other. And we're in 1957, we're in 1965, and this, that, and the other. But it felt like they were in the 1940s in part of this movie. It was like, did anybody do any research? I don't know if Virginia's just that far behind the time or or, or what, but it just felt like it was so f- much further back in time. <clears throat> and, I don't know. Yeah. I didn't have any. Like well, with, at specifically the grandmother's like the house 1965 and, era was like, I mean, that's pretty that's pretty recent. It still felt like yeah. you were like in horse and buggy <laughs> type era. It really did. And man, I don't know. So, I, I mean, doesn't it, it, doesn't it feel good that we can all hate a movie together? Um, so... This is oh, Ryan liked it. I, I I it didn't live up to to hype. I wouldn't say I hated it, but I'm, we'll talk you into it. Um, you can try. I honestly thought I I was like kind of not wanting to do this episode because I just knew I was going to get the I loved it. You know, I just it's like what I didn't like it at all. You know, and I knew I was going to have to battle, but uh, <laughs> ouch. <laughs> but it's so nice to have people on my side. Um. But no, I'm just I, kidding. I'm just kidding. I like yeah. it. This is a great movie. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> um, love Robert Penson. I loved it when he poked his belly out uh, when he was having fun with his wife there to try and make himself look disgusting. It's well, obviously poking his belly. That's like, that's like, that's what I told Melissa because she fell asleep halfway through this movie and I was like, I was explaining the rest of I'm the movie jealous. to her and I was like, yeah, Robert Penson's like, just trying to make himself even more disgusting than he is. And he's like a really wiry guy. And he's like, obviously like doing the like poke belly thing to make him feel like he's got this like pot belly, like grossness going on when he's laying there in the chair. I'm like, it's so contrived and just like stupid. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I I mean, I don't know if they thought that jumping around and everything was going to be super artsy or, or what, or if, what they thought that was going to achieve. But I did read that they left a lot on the cutting room floor um, of this movie. That doesn't change anything for me, though. This movie was, I mean, to me it was poorly directed. It, it, the cinematography wasn't, there's nothing interesting about that. The only part of the movie that even made me like, whoa, or... Ugh, or turn my like I didn't want to watch it was whenever um, the dog uh, Warkowski got stabbed yeah. in the neck and right. um, it I mean I knew that he was going to kill her but I didn't exp- I was like whoa you know and it yeah. looked almost real um, but I think I hated every character in this movie like like hated and. <laughs> I, I that no character had a redeemable factor except for the grandmother maybe, and, yeah. and I, but <laughs> she's like ah another funeral. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was like it was just like everybody in this movie was just selfish. But it, it just felt like it felt like people were in this movie and they thought they were gonna get. That's why I kind of asked this at the beginning. It felt like they thought, man, this is gonna be my Oscar. This this is gonna be it, and I'm gonna overact the crap out of it. You know, like. Yeah, it was just so overacted and underdirected, and I'm wondering if Netflix stepped in, but or <clears throat> whomever, because I'm sure they made it and then Netflix bought it. I'm not sure the history of it because we can't Maybe. find the budget on it, so we don't know. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't have any issues with like the feel of it. Like I don't know. I, again, it's it's one of those things where like I'm looking at it through that lens of this is a Netflix movie, so. And, you know, my bar is not very high. <laughs> like, I've looked at their, yeah. you know, I've watched their Adam well, I mean, Sandler I, movie. I agree with Adam you Sandler movies on there. in that regard. But, and again, I feel like this could have been better given time to breathe. I still don't think it would have been good, but I think it would have been better than it is if it was like more of a, you know, and I don't know if anybody as you know, we obviously, we haven't read the book, so we don't know how it plays out in the book, but I feel like there are elements in this story. I mean, this, the beats aren't the problem. Like the, the way it progresses is not necessarily the problem. It's just like, the, it's the kind of just storytelling. Yeah. Just the way it's framed and then not really caring about anybody in the movie and everything just because it, everything happens so fast, it just feels so contrived. It's like we just got to get to this next thing. Well, they were trying to do the. It, it's kind of, in my opinion, kind of an 
overutilized concept these days where they try to tell all these different stories and then weave them together as the movie goes on. Yeah. And that... Do you remember that movie, uh, Crash? Again, it's one of those things where like it took so long for everything to get together yeah. where I, I was like, it's almost the end of the movie here and like I'm finally realizing kind of what the main conflict's going to be. Yeah. And it wasn't, and it just wasn't material. There's just not enough there to make you care though. It's like, I, you know. That's what I'm saying. It wasn't material. It yeah. was just like, I, okay. I, I'm going uh, to, you Thought know, you frozen I again. do you remember the movie, um, do you remember the movie uh, Crash that was yeah. all, you know, uh, you know, Twitter back in like 2001 or two or something mm-hmm. like that? Um, Wouldn't have been Twitter, but yeah. All a Twitter is a saying, you nutcases. Um, so anyway. No, they invented the word Twitter. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so anywho. Oh, God. Crash. I love old stuff, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Crash, um, Brendan, Brendan Fraser. Yes, great. Yeah. So, and Charlie Kaufman uh, wrote it. And, uh, That's Brendan Fraser. Okay. Good times. <laughs> uh, Go on. So, anyway, that this movie, like you were saying, Ryan, it kind of felt like every single storyline just kind of intertwined with one another. And it was like, it was like, oh, you killed this guy and then you hitchhiked and you got picked up by the Bonnie and Clyde folks. And then the cop was his, was the brother of the girl that you killed that picked you up when you were a kid. And it was like, shut yeah. up. That's exactly yeah, the way up. I explained it to Melissa on the drive to Savannah. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> this happened and then this, and I think it's because of this, but I don't know. I don't care. <laughs> And that, like, Ugh. I was just like, it, it's it's a stinker. Yeah. Yeah. Every time somebody killed themselves in the movie, I was like, well, at least they're not in the movie anymore. <laughs> so it's like, this is terrible. This movie's awful. Um, yeah. I hated I hated every ounce of it. I'm going to put it this way. Even, like, like the, <laughs> I thought it was, like, funny that the, the girl that's, like, hanging herself, like, she's like, and then there's, and then he, she had the second thought, and she didn't want to kill herself. Then she slipped on thing, and she's dead now. It's like, yeah, all right. That reminded, of, that reminded me of, when I saw that scene, it reminded me of Office Space, where the guy's in the garage, and he turns the car on to kill himself. He's, and, and his wife he's backing out of his driveway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> his wife is like, have a good day, or whatever, yeah. yeah. Um I'm going to I'm going to put it this way and I think these words will kind of sum up how much I hate this movie. I'd rather watch BVS than this movie ever again. I would too. I would love to watch BVS. Let's watch know, it right we now. We should do that. Actually, that's a great idea. Not, since you brought it up, Al, of course. I I'm not saying it. I want to watch BVS. I'm saying I don't watch <clears> it. No, I know what you're week. saying. I haven't watched it today, <laughs> so we could probably work it in before we get to bed. I mean, 3 hours we could I'm not going to watch it. I was just kind of putting a point out there. Don't say it if you don't mean it, all right? <laughs> I mean that I hate this movie more than that turd. So uh, I cannot don't, stand this movie. You've got, you've finally got an ally in Brandon. Don't ruin it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine. Trust me. I'm going to burn that bridge very quickly <laughs> on our, whenever we do another review. But anyway, I mean, let's talk about the story. Okay, because we've all kind of touched on it and things of that nature. Let's so let's talk about that. Let's let's not just sit here and burn cigarettes out on this. Um, what did what did you guys think of the, like the 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 subplot or the B story or maybe C story? I don't know of the Bonnie and Clyde type thing that I keep you know like uh, Jason Patrick and Riley Q. Did you guys? Well, that's that's what I'm saying. I. There were so many side stories, and I like I couldn't eat. Like obviously, you get the feeling that Tom Holland's is going to be, you know, the main story. <clears throat> but right. I just like none of the supporting storylines really did much for me. I th- I felt like that storyline was it. It didn't suffer from the acting department. I thought it was well done, in, as far as that is concerned for me. Um, I just felt like it was the same thing over and over. Like it was just like, 
We're getting, we're going to get the hitchhiker. We're going to get him to get naked with my wife. And then I'm going to take pictures and kill him. And then we're going to get the hitchhiker. We're going to get him. Gonna, the, the really the only change was like she was like like starting to have second thoughts about him right. or what they were doing or whatever. And that was really it. Mm-hmm. But then she, I don't know. I guess that the only thing that like that pays off is that yeah, I guess because she's having second thoughts he started to not trust her and then he changed her bullets out and then she wasn't able to kill Tom Holland at the end um, but I don't know yeah I, the connection I, with her and the brother Sebastian Stan and I I thought this movie again we haven't read the book so if you've read the book please tell us if you think it's if this movie oh, the book. you know but but the narrator of the movie is the writer of the book. So I'm sure it's hard to have the actual author of the book <laughs> there looking over your shoulder. I'm I'm but but from what I read, that was Campos' like idea to have him narrate the movie. So um so yeah. if that's the case then he kinda put that on himself. But I thought that was the strongest story in the movie. Um, maybe because I like uh, both those actors. Um, but I thought the movie would have been a little stronger had that been the main story. And along the way, they touched the, the people's lives that they touched were these people. You know what I mean? Like if they, if they wanted to tie it all together or something like that. Like yeah. maybe maybe along the along their journey, but everybody didn't need to be what? five five miles away I from just each think other. This I think is, this is they're trying to tell <laughs> they're trying to make three movies and pack it into one movie. And yeah. it's kind like well, yeah, of like Rise of Skywalker. Yeah. I other. think that part the reason why it's it works better than the other is because it's the same actors playing those characters throughout, and you're not like like. With Tom Holland's, you like you have to start off with his dad's story in the military in the war, or whatever, and then like, and then you know him and the wife, and they have the kid, and then, and then it's a different actor playing him younger, and then with the whole dog thing, and the mom getting sick, and then you know there's all that stuff, and then when you switch, even though it's the same character, it's a different actor playing. So then it's like there's an there's a and then then it kind of hits a reset button when Tom Holland yeah. comes into it. Well, yeah. Well, the, like, there's a lot of fat in this movie too. I think this movie's like two and a half hours, right at yeah. something like that. And, and for and Tom Holland to be the lead, he's not in the movie a ton. Yeah, well, I was surprised how long it took for him to show up. Yeah. Um, I just, I just knew I was gonna get on here tonight, and you guys were gonna be like, "Did you see Spider Man shoot Batman and uh, things of that nature?" So I was just like, "Ugh." Spider Man um, shoot Batman. Well, Tom Holland's Spider Man and. Yeah. Robert Pattinson's Brandon's favorite Batman. Oh. So. I'm not there yet. I've, I've, I'm, <laughs> a, I'm a Batman behind you. <laughs> well, it's his That's favorite. Right. Like ben a- it's Ben Affleck's not in this movie? It's, or is in this movie? It's Brandon's favorite bat suit. I'm sorry, Hashtag not my Batman. <laughs> so, um, so anyway. And, uh, when I say that, I mean Pattinson. I don't want anybody to get confused. Yeah, he hates Ben Affleck. Nope. So. Don't nope. get that confused. He hates ben, him. don't believe him. Nope. <laughs> hates him. Hates him. Um, so, no, I... I I don't know. I, I have no more words for this movie. I don't even think it deserves <laughs> my words. <laughs> I just hate this movie. I hate it. So, anybody else got anything else to say about this movie? <laughs> um... Let's see what could be said that hasn't been said. Well, if you if you have an affinity for dogs, maybe stay away from this. Yeah, that um, crucifixion of yeah. the dog. Yeah. Um, Katie was not a fan of that. I felt like so. So he went I, back. I think to, that they that the author doesn't like people that are religious. Um, so he did say this was based on people in his life in Ohio. I think he's from Ohio, the author. So, yeah, uh, it, it, it kind of felt like he was thumbing his nose. Now, I will say this. 
I am Christian and I have met many a bad Christian <laughs> over my life span and I can see it. I've met people like some of these people. Uh, but this really felt like it was heavy handed <laughs> at like yeah. disliking. I didn't, I didn't take any, like I'm Christian as well. I didn't take any, I'm not offended. Like, uh, I don't know. I, I just, there, there are like, the, I, there are people out there that are over the top like that. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Like, you know, and certain, certain groups and whatnot. We don't need to get into all that, but I'm just saying that, uh, I, it's not like I got offended by that. I don't think he was bashing Christianity. I think he was bashing certain Christians or certain people that may he mm-hmm. may have crossed paths with. Is my point in saying that? Sure. Yeah, well, I think it's they, more. Yeah, it's just, more of like the fake. He didn't. There's a lot of bad actors as far as people. The representation of that s- sect of people. Uh, yeah. That he puts on display and doesn't really show the other side. He 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 kind of portrays them as like, like especially like the dad, you know, thinking that he needs to sacrifice the dog for the mom to like, and then like the other yeah, teacher took- thinking that he could sacrifice his wife and then bring her back. And um, with the girl, the his Tom Holland's not sister, but like yeah, I don't know what how you her, her buying into him telling her that she yeah like i i made a comment like this girl's crazy and katie's like no she's being brainwashed and like this girl's crazy like it was just this the portrayal that, was like it was like real fanatical you know it's kind of like the waco people i mean that's kind of yeah. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah well i kind of yeah. actually thought it was very david koresh the way pattinson's character was being you know who i thought of is joel osteen that's exactly who i thought of and just Smooth talker with absolutely no meaning behind his words. And yeah. Um, but again, who in their right mind would have thought that preacher meant well? <laughs> like, like, like yeah. the whole thing about the, the chicken livers or whatever it was, it was like, these mm-hmm. poor people brought this poor plate. And, uh, and, and I'll, I was like, this is stupid dialogue. This is dumb dialogue. Yeah. <laughs> this is stupid. Right. And you could tell when they... It was all real. I mean, everything was really heavy-handed. Yeah, when they wrote that, you could <clears throat> tell they were like, yeah, that's good. That's really good. <laughs> <laughs> and, I mean, so Antonio Campos and, and his brother, I guess, uh, Paolo, uh, wrote... The movie, the screenplay, but uh, Donald Ray Pollock was the writer of the book. And I will say this about him. He has quite the accolades as a writer. So I don't want to uh, poo-poo his party of a writing. So maybe the book is much better. I I have no idea. Um, yeah. Well, that's kind of what I was saying. I mean, I feel like there is a better version of this. I just don't think it's, I don't think the way they adapted it was the best way to go. Yeah, um, and I don't want the Campos cut, so don't put that on Twitter. I don't want any other cut of this. Just stop. This movie sucks. Ryan, what would you think? <laughs> what, what, you got anything else to say? I don't really have much to say. The uh, Netflix, you know, I, I had to view it through that lens, you know. Mm-hmm. I just don't have a huge, don't have a lot of... Uh, so uh, far, I've only seen about. really two Netflix movies that I enjoyed, and that was Marriage Story and I Am Mother. I like both of those. Um, the last two that I saw were, um, what is it called? The the uh, Michael Bay one, <laughs> <laughs> which was one of the worst movies I've ever seen. Um, it's unfortunate because or something. Yeah. Like it just seems like they're getting the reputation of that they're just a dumping ground for movies that aren't going to yeah, work. Yeah, and then I saw an Adam Sandler movie that was wow. It's almost like they're the new like TBS or TNT. You know, like back in the day. No, nah, not even. But I'm just saying, or maybe USA Network. Maybe that's what they are. The new. I mean, USA. I don't know. I don't. I never remember like those networks getting original movies, but well, they would like, have like. Um, they're like, they're like on the same level as like Hallmark original like Christmas movies or like dude, Lifetime or like no. something like Hallmark. I wouldn't go that low. Hallmark but is yeah, leaps and bounds good. above this movie. 
like <laughs> <laughs> like leaps and bounds above this. At least they have a freaking plot. Well, that you can. They definitely succeed in long form uh, story like with their series and stuff. I feel like they they have a good handle on that medium, but mm-hmm. for whatever reason, their feature films are just not up to snuff. If the same person's been in charge all these years of buying your movies and not your TV shows, if it's a different person, may need to dust up that uh, resume <laughs> and get it ready for another round out there on Glassdoor and LinkedIn. So, um, fellas, this movie, Ow. would you <laughs> would you uh, stream it? Would you buy it? Because, hey, some of these movies on Netflix are Criterion. Marriage Story, Irishman, uh, Roma, Criterion. So, they all find their way to physical eventually. Yeah. So would you buy it? Would you stream it? I don't think I even need to ask this, but we're going to do it. Would you stream it? Would you tell a friend? Would you cancel your subscription? I would say, I would say, <laughs> if you've seen the trailer, go back in time and unwatch the trailer. And if you've got something going on in your house and you want something in the background, <laughs> put it on. Other than that, <laughs> nah. I'm just it's, it's a very like take it or leave it kind of thing for me. Yeah, uh, Brandon. I'd just say skip it. I mean, I don't, I don't hate it as much as you do, but I, don't, I mean, I'll, I'll never watch it again. I was very, uh, oh, it's just, definitely not a repeat. I would, yeah. I, I have not many positive things to say about it, and uh, you know, I, ex- I maybe my expectations should have been in check, but with the cast, I just. And the tone, like Ryan was saying, I just expected more, maybe. And um, sorry, guys, you let me down. You really let me down. <laughs> <laughs> this is where we send out that that gif of, uh, I failed you. <laughs> I failed you. Alfred. <laughs> trusted me. I failed you. I failed you. <laughs> um, just, just before I say my piece, this is 65% on Rotten Tomatoes, 7.2 on IMDb out of 10, and 55 on Metacritic. So, I would... I'm I'm just going to put this out there. Netflix, you're on thin ice with my subscription. Okay? You only got, you only got Stranger Things, and I, I, I barely click on your app. Everybody else is doing better than you. You used to be the leader. Come on. Incoming massive Netflix strategy change after this episode. Mm-hmm. Huh? I'm trying to help you out here. Got to retain Al. <laughs> trying to help you out here. You're spending, I think they said they're going to spend a billion dollars or something like that, some crazy amount of money on uh, new... Uh, Original content. Me, yeah, media. and uh, it's, it's, mm, This isn't the way to go. This isn't... This is... This, just just burn the money. Well, if you ever have an idea a, of doing something like this, just burn the money in the street. Here's a question. I don't know how I to would, frame this. I would, but I, would, I would burn this movie. Uh, do, do you, what about Average Joe, which is honestly their audience. It's, it's very much the average movie goer, goer, so to speak. There's not really yeah, much yeah. of that. But do you think, what do you think to take away for casual movie watchers are going to be because i feel like i could see someone like you know some of my relatives being like oh it was pretty good you know i like that i honestly can't i honestly can't think of anybody i know that would think this is good if those happy madison productions are the most successful like they continue to make them and they're trash yeah but those are those are easy to swallow this is this is one of those things movies that you can put on if there's nothing that you've, you know, you're real passionate about, and you get a star-studded cast. But the like thing I, is, is that my my uh, nobody in my family knows who Robert Pattinson or Tom. Look out! No, we but know I, I would imagine real snobby down there. I would imagine <laughs> that your your family would gravitate to the setting, and so would mine. Um, and you know, I just feel like, and again, they don't they don't critique movies like we do i just feel like they would have much better things to say 
That's what I'm saying. I think you get a lot of people that would just say meh on this. Like, it's all right. It's I, cool. I, I'll, I'll be in, I don't know. I mean, this is, I don't know. I, I honestly just don't believe percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Like, that's what's happening. But that's critics. Let's see. Let's see what audience the... Audience score, too. Audience score is 83%. See? So, let's put it this way. If you like this movie, please explain why. We want to have that conversation. I'm not going to sit here and say you're stupid or anything like that for liking it. Please explain to me why I should like it. Please explain that to me, and, and, and I'll be glad to listen. But... I think this movie is a flaming pile of garbage. It's just garbage. And it it thought it was so much smarter than it really was. And it was trying to talk over everybody's head. It's like an IT guy that's trying to explain websites and, and like the new technology to people and whatnot. And, and they're like, what do you mean gigahertz and gigabytes? I don't know. I don't know the difference of megabytes and gigabytes and stuff like that. And then gigawatts. Yeah, and they're just trying to talk over somebody's head just to sound smart, and they're using the most basic language for that field, you know? And that's what this felt like. This felt like, I, I so want to be a period piece. I want to, uh, I just I just want to be this, and I want to be that, and, 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 and you didn't achieve it. It's just terrible. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just terrible. And if you want to go see a movie of a period piece movie, go watch October Sky. Jake Gyllenhaal, who produced this movie, is one of the producers, and I love Jake Gyllenhaal. So, <clears throat> hey, go man. watch Lawless. Go watch I mean, that one. It's good. It's okay. It. It's good one. But um, yeah. Alice says it's a stinker. I like it. Love Mashiah. Tom Hardy. Also, Jason Clark. I like those guys. Also, but that movie's okay. Also, uh, Commissioner Gordon. It's good. It's a good movie. Also, I think Mia Wachowski is in it too, right? I don't yeah, remember. Sure. I saw it in a theater a long time ago. It's good. So, movie. um, I like it. Anyone else in the movie, Brandon? Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's see. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> uh, go- oh, Jessica Chastain. She's in it. Yeah. Cool. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, cool, cool. why didn't you tell me old Jesse Chas was in there? Yeah. Um, I don't know if that's her nickname. <laughs> um, it's not Jesse Chas. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I don't know that for sure, but I'm willing to bet. <laughs> so. So anyway, I, uh, I I'm gonna I'm gonna say again the movies that I suggest you watch instead of this: Miller's Crossing, Blood Simple, Barton Fink, Hudsucker Proxy, and I'll put the links to these down in the description as well. And I'm gonna say October Sky. All those movies accomplished and lawless. the era of which they were trying to live in, and they felt lived in, and they told their stories better. And they're compelling, and you want to watch them time and time again. And yes, I own those movies. So, uh, <laughs> shut it. I hate this movie. That's my thing. I, I would, I would never tell anybody oh to watch God. this movie. I would never tell anybody to watch this movie. I hate this movie so much. I hate it. So I, I was literally, uh, I watched this movie by myself, and. I was like, oh my god! And I cannot tell you how many times I che- how many times I checked how much time was left in this movie. It's like, oh my god! It felt. I will like- say that when Melissa woke up from her mid movie nap, she was <laughs> like, "I'm sorry, I can't finish this." She's like, "But you finish it," and she walked out. And I had it on pause, and I was like, oh, I "Gotta keep watching this because we're gonna do it. I can't just not watch it <laughs> to finish it." Can I call so. the guys and say we don't need to do this one? <laughs> <laughs> I so did. I just. Uh, I texted Ryan, and I was like, "He." I said, I, uh, "I watched it or whatever," and I was like, "I have things to say." <laughs> <laughs> He's like, "What'd you think about Pattinson?" I was like, "Well, we'll wait. <laughs> <laughs> we'll wait. Save for the that. show." Yeah. Now I just want to ask this, just because did either one of you think I would like this movie? I don't think you'll like any movie, but um, uh, love Green Room. Uh, I kind of, I kind of uh, stand in the same. Uh, I'm. Room and same I will. I will forever be surprised when you like a new release. I'll just say that, unless it's if it's Quentin Tarantino, you're you're already on board for that. Doesn't even matter. Yeah, that could be a pile of poop, but you'd still like it. That's um, not true. I don't like Jackie Brown. 
Okay. <laughs> and a lot of people love that movie. Anyway, so <laughs> I'm trying to think of the last. <laughs> well, I liked, I mean, to your point, I liked. <laughs> Once upon a time in Hollywood, I did like that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I also like, I liked Beach Bum. I liked Beach Bum, the Harmony Corinne movie. I like that movie. Yeah. <laughs> that was good. Cool. So, anyway. Uh, well, can you go through your list of movies that they should watch one more time? <laughs> Please do not. <laughs> <laughs> Gladly. Um, no, I won't bore everybody with that. But I do think you should watch those movies. So, everybody. You said Batman v Superman, right? No, I did not. <laughs> I heard it. I said... You Inst- said everybody should go watch Batman v Superman instead of this movie. <laughs> Dude, we got this recorded. It does not say that. And we can edit episode. it however <laughs> we <laughs> need to edit it. Does not, it does not say <laughs> that in this episode. Um, you don't have the recording. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I have my recording. Um, yeah. No, I, uh, I, I, you know, I, I try not to say I hate movies. Uh, as much as I can because I don't think it's very, I don't know, constructive to help people find movies to watch or whatever. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm trying Said to save you. this episode. Well, life is short. <laughs> don't waste your time watching this crap. So, anyway, anybody else got anything else to say? No. I don't okay. think so. All right. We're good. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in to Cinema Machine. Sorry to be so negative, but uh, let's... Hey, again, tell us why we should like this movie if you liked it. And I don't care why you liked it. Please explain it to us. Or explain it to me, <laughs> and I'll be glad to have a conversation with you. And He's if I need to go the back, truth. He doesn't care why you liked it. <laughs> no. No, I'm, I'm saying I'm – saying, I'm not saying it like that. I'm saying I, I, if I don't care what your reasoning is. Right. I want to hear it is my point. <laughs> Um, but Ryan, do you want to tell them how they can communicate with us best? Yeah. Um, easiest if you're watching on YouTube is down in the comments. And, um, if you want to chat with us on Instagram at set machine pod, uh, we're always ready to talk movies. All right. That's good. Get it going. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have quite the outtakes for you coming up on social media yes we do and uh we'll Leave be your comments in the comments thanks for thanks for joining yeah, us on sound late. machine uh brandon ryan uh, it's been fun we always love talking movies uh even if we disagree or don't like the movie but it's always fun so thanks everybody and we'll see you on the next cinema machine so long Bye.